The Lich has always been such a cool character to me, not only being voiced by the legendary Ron Perlman, but his overall likability as a villain despite his goals being quite straightforward and not having some complex villain origin story. Yet, it works. Very well, in fact. I've been hyper fixating on this character like crazy since his return in Fiona and Cake, so as a nice way to give this character a bit of a send-off while hopefully getting over my hyper fixation in the process, I'm gonna go over the full story of Adventure Time's Lich King. Quick disclaimer for OG Adventure Time only watchers, there will be spoilers for the ending of Fiona and Cake in this video, so I strongly suggest watching all of it first before going through the whole video. Also, when it comes to Sweet Pea, I'm not gonna be covering everything related to him, only the specific Lich-related stuff because Sweet Pea became his own person slash character pretty much right when he came into existence so yeah also don't forget to subscribe with the bell turn on if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future yes while the mortal world doubts and questions i know exactly what i am i am the ceaseless wheel the last scholar of gold i am your doom so, before the Lich made his official debut in Adventure Time, he had some pretty interesting history. All the way back in ancient times when dinosaurs were still roaming about, a dangerous object known as a Catalyst Comet was plummeting towards the planet very quickly. This comet in particular was containing the essence of the Lich, the embodiment of imminent death and destruction. Worried for the safety of the planet, the four elementals at the time were attempting to figure out how to deal with the comet. That's when the ice elemental named Urgence Evergreen hoped creating a magical crown that would grant the user their deepest wish would be enough to stop the comet. However, the other three elementals thought the crown would cause irreparable damage to the very existence of their universe, but despite the warnings from his fellow comrades, Evergreen was determined to go through with his plan, even if it meant freezing the other three elementals with his own ice powers. Evergreen then goes on a quest with his dinosaur assistant Gunther to retrieve the ruby eyes of an ancient lava dog named Magwood to use as a power source for the magic crown. Unfortunately, by the time they get back to Evergreen's quarters and try to use the crown, Magwood comes back for a vengeance and attacks the castle, leaving Evergreen under some ice rubble unable to put the crown on himself, leaving Gunther as the last line of defense against the Catalyst Comet. Problem is, Gunther turned into a mini version of his own master, shouting Gunther no over and over while shooting out small blasts of ice, resulting in the comet reaching the planet's surface and likely being the cause of not only the extinction of dinosaurs, but the death of Urgent's Evergreen as well. Many years went by with the Lich's essence remaining dormant on the Earth's surface, that is until the Great Mushroom War, a war that took place around the late 20th to early 21st century that involved tons of nuclear strikes between various various countries, ending with a giant mutagenic bomb being dropped on what used to be North America, with said bomb awakening the Lich in physical form after it was detonated. This war, by extension, is what indirectly created Ooh and all the weird yet funny creatures that exist in it. From then, throughout the next a thousand years or so, the Lich would dedicate his time to studying the ways of gold, an evil entity that was the true embodiment of chaos and destruction, eventually dubbing himself as the last scholar of gold, essentially wanting to represent everything gold stood for on the physical plane. Though at some point in more recent history, but possibly before Finn Mertens was even born, the Lich was cast down by a legendary hero of Oon and Billy, where he would then be imprisoned with an amber and a giant tree located in the Candy Kingdom. On to the more present day of Oon, Finn and Jake would have their first encounter with the Lich in the episode Mortal Folly. The boys are with Princess Bubblegum at the castle trying to do some mediating, when PB has a dark vision resembling the Lich. Fearing what she thought, she takes Finn and Jake to the Lich's chamber where they have to wear gems around their bodies to prevent the Lich from getting into their heads. As PB gives the boys a brief rundown of the Lich's history, a wandering snail enters the chamber and quickly falls under the Lich's spell, where it breaks the Amber Dome from the outside and frees his main body. Finn and Jake try to stop him, but it's not enough, and he flies away into the distance, back to his lair where a will of power awaits his return so he can become all-powerful again. PB gives Finn the gauntlet Billy used to defeat the Lich the first time, in hopes he'll be able to follow suit. The two try to make their way towards the Lich while also dealing with a distracting Ice King, who ends up kidnapping the princess along the way, which ends up halting the progress of Finn and Jake enough to allow the Lich to release hundreds hundreds of evil souls from the entryway to the lair. As Finn fights his way through some guards, he blows a hole in the ground using the gauntlet, but ends up grabbing onto an old pipe that leaks toxic waste, which pours into the Lich's well of power so he can power up even more. Finn attempts to attack, however, the Lich being more powerful again, he easily turns the gauntlet to dust, burning Finn's hand in the process and shooting fire at Jake shortly after. Because Finn's protective jewel broke in the process of this, the Lich manages to get into Finn's head and he tries to get him to walk into the well. But thanks to Finn's strong will, he's able to resist at the end, leading to the Lich just trying 
could dispose of him instead. Though much to the Lich's surprise, his flames had no effect on Finn's body. This being because the sweater that PB gave him has the power of love in it, the Lich's one true weakness. Following this realization, Finn decides to use the sweater itself to strike down the Lich. He pulls the sweater through the Lich's eyes while the Lich laughs maniacally the whole time. Finn is able to break off the Lich's face where he quickly turns to dust. Although things seem to be good for the heroes at the moment, the Ice King foolishly drops PB into the Well of Power. The following episode, Mortal Recoil, follows PB attempting to recover from being dropped into the Well of Power. Problem is, she's acting super strange now, very similar to how possessed children act in the Exorcist movies. At one point, growing into a monster hybrid that's as tall as her castle, forcing the nearby Gumball Guardians to take action. Soon after, Ice King appears and explains to Finn and Jake how he saw the Lich possess PB via his wizard eyes, but didn't speak of it sooner because sometimes they're accurate while other times they display hallucinations. Finn is not happy with the Ice King, obviously, and he refuses his help for a bit, but eventually agrees with the Ice King's help after Jake starts getting attacked. Ice King successfully freezes her from the bottom up. Sadly, the ice statue of her ends up falling over and shatters to pieces, forcing the local Dr. Ice Cream to take her into immediate surgery. PB survives, but due to the lack of gum to put her back together, she's now 13 years old. She shares a hug with Finn for saving her, and all seems well because maybe now Finn and PB can properly date, but it appears the Lich was not going down so easily as everyone thought. For pretty much the entire third season and most of the fourth season, the snail version of the Lich would lie in wait for the right moment to strike, and that day finally came in the season four titular episode, The Lich. The setting opens with Finn having a weird dream about the snail lich attacking Billy, which scares him enough to wake him up. Out of fear, this dream could be a premonition dream that foretells a terrible future for Billy. The two of them eventually get to Billy's place to find that he's presumably totally okay. So Finn gives Billy the rundown of his dream, and after hearing them out, Billy suggests they gather the various different crystals from Ooze Princesses and the Ice King's Crown to power the Enchiridion, which when fully powered can open a gateway to the multiverse as well as a gateway to the Time Room dimension where Prismo the Wishmaster resides. Billy's plan is to put the Lich into there where he wouldn't be able to do any harm to life. Eventually, it comes down to PB's crystal being the last remaining one to power the Enchiridion, and much to PB's annoyance after putting up a fight against Finn, he and Jake succeed in taking the gem from her crown. They both rush to Billy waiting in the distant candy forest, but PB cries out to them claiming that Billy is really the Lich, meaning the dream Finn had about Billy had already become a reality. One of the Gumball Guardians blasts Billy and reveals the Lich's face hidden underneath. The Lich attempts to manipulate Finn into giving him the book, claiming how it has the power to make Finn immortal if he wanted, and scenes like this are what I love about the Lich because he isn't against mental manipulation tactics to get what he wants, despite being an incredibly powerful being in terms of magical and physical ability. As a last ditch effort to stop the Lich, Finn decides to destroy the Enchiridion for good. Problem is, destroying it just ended up opening the wormhole to Prismo's dimension anyway. The Lich thanks Finn for all his help and goes in, but that doesn't stop Jake and eventually Finn from trying to pull him out. However, the physical force from the Lich is too much for them to handle, so the two brothers get dragged into the wormhole with him. The season 5 premiere episode, Finn the Human, begins with the boys continuing to chase the Lich through Prismo's dimension. However, by the time they finally catch up to him inside Prismo's cube, he vanishes from their vision, to where Prismo tells them the Lich wished for the extinction of all life and he granted the wish. So in hopes of countering this, Finn wishes that the Lich had never existed, which promoted the creation of the Farm World reality. A reality where Simon Petrikov slash Ice King used the power of the Magic Crown to stop the mutagenic bomb from exploding on American soil, thus preventing the creation of Ooh and subsequently the Lich's physical form. But because of all the issues the Farm World Finn was dealing with when it came to the local group of troublemakers called the Destiny Gang, he ended up putting the magical crown on himself in hopes of saving his family and taking out the Destiny Gang for good. He succeeds in defeating the Destiny Gang, but the power of the crown is so overwhelming that Finn unintentionally unleashes the frozen dormant bomb, resulting in the Lich coming to life anyway, using the Farm World Jake as a physical host. Still hanging out inside Prismo's cube, the main version of Jake is able to see some of what's going on in the Farm World reality. After getting worried about the safety of Farm World Finn, he wishes for him to be safe. But Prismo warns Jake of the consequences of wishing because he grew to like him after chilling with him for a bit. He doesn't want him to commit just yet. So he indirectly instructs Jake to wish that the Lich's original wish was for he and Finn to get back home safe to O. Seemingly devastated by this blunder, the Lich remains inside Prismo's cube from then until the season 6 premiere episode Wake Up, is stuck in a paralyzed state the entire time. After Jake leaves Prismo's little party, he rendezvous with Finn at their treehouse, where he gets caught up to speed about Finn's biological dad, Martin Mertens, being alive and located at some place called the Citadel. At first, Finn tries to wish himself there, but Prismo claims it's impossible due to it functioning like a cosmic prison. So the only way to get in is to commit a cosmic prime. Prismo, being the homie he is, gives Finn and Jake the perfect crime to get in there, which is to wake up the sleeping old man responsible for Prismo's existence. Although Jake in particular is very hesitant on waking him up now because he doesn't want Prismo to stop existing, Prismo persuades him to do so anyway. However, before they get the chance, the Lich suddenly springs into action and wakes Prismo up himself, with the presumed intention 
intention of screwing up Finn's hope to see Martin, and as another act of revenge, the Lich ends up killing the old man behind Prismo, presumably for failing to grant his true wish to extinguish all life. The Lich is then instantly imprisoned inside a crystal by a Citadel Guardian and is about to be brought to the main area, but Finn and Jake are determined to see Martin enough to grab onto the crystal and go with him. Although Escape from the Citadel mostly focused on the bittersweet reunion between Martin and Finn, this didn't stop the Lich from trying to further his goal to destroy all life, even with Prismo gone. Because even inside the Crystal Prison, the Lich's magic is powerful enough to still work. It's enough to not only break himself out of the Crystal, but to free other nearby prisoners as well, most of which he's able to hypnotize to put them under his influence. Once the Lich is completely freed from his own Crystal, he sheds off the rest of Billy's flesh and is completely bones again. He used his Fall Command spell to stop Finn and Jake in their tracks too, where he tells them he'll sail to a billion worlds with the help of the Citadel prisoners and not stop until every light has been extinguished. The Lich is very close to touching Finn, trying to kill him, but Finn is able to briefly overcome the hypnosis and unknowingly infects the Lich with the nearby Citadel Guardian blood, blood that has the power to grow flesh over bone. The Lich begins to freak out over this, so Finn continues to spread more Guardian blood over the Lich's body until he's unable to move. He eventually gains consciousness again and is now in the shape of a giant baby, now named Sweet Pea, who gets dropped off at Tree Trunks' house for her to take care of, because he's like a little baby now. For the remainder of the series, this version of the Lich remains inside Sweet Pea and seems to be completely dormant inside this big guy. But there have been exceptions. Like in the season 6 episode, Gold Stars, where the King of Ooh and his buddy Tirano were messing with Sweet Pea to the point where he became very emotionally distressed, allowing the Lich part of him to take over his body for a brief moment, where he gives them a little history lesson, telling him about before there was anything, before even time itself, there were just monsters. King of Ooh and Toronto start having horrific visions of a monster horde while screaming for their lives. Once the possession ends, the two of them run off calling Sweet Pea a monster, but he just thinks to himself how it must have been a bad dream. And later on in the season 6 episode, Be Sweet, Sweet Pea has a dream about a purple catalyst comet, whispering the phrase, the comet approacheth in his sleep, likely being the Lich briefly overtaking him again since the Lich himself originated from a catalyst comet. Although the catalyst comet Sweet Pea dreamed of was a purple one, which Orgolorg tried to absorb after reawakening from Gunther's body. But thanks to the efforts of Finn, Orgolorg's absorption failed, and Martin ended up going off with this comet to live in another plane of existence. The Lich makes another major appearance in the Season 7 episode crossover, specifically the Farmworld Jake hybrid version of the Lich, since that reality had still been existing the entire time, even after Finn and Jake changed the Lich's wish. This version of the Lich pretty much does the same thing that the Billy version of the Lich did to Finn, manipulating him to powering up the Farmworld version of the Enchiridion so he can travel across the multiverse into destroy life everywhere. Although this version of the Lich looks incredibly evil compared to when he was disguised as Billy, the farm world version of Finn has become super impressionable due to the magical crown corrupting his mind. Original Finn and Jake, who were sent to the farm world by Prismo to quote-unquote fix the reality, attempt to subdue the Lich, but struggle due to the overwhelming power of him and the farm world Finn's ice powers. The Lich succeeds in subduing Jake, and he reveals his true intentions to farm world Finn about how he and his family will die in infinite lifetimes across the multiverse. The Lich then tries to kill Jake using his poisonous breath, but Finn's grass sword is able to activate and chop the Lich's hand off that was holding Jake. But Jake foolishly pushes the hand into the multiversal portal, which allows the farm world Lich's hand to duplicate and appear in every single universe, including their own. But eventually, Finn is able to use the made device that Prismo gave him to destroy the main body of the farm world Lich. The farm world Lich hand in the main version of Ooh laid in wait for his time to strike against Sweet Pea in hopes of the two of them joining forces. Eventually sneaking into his bed the night before the events of the episode Whispers began. Sweet Pea ended up catching a glimpse of the Lich Hand in his room and freaked out, running away from his home for hours on end crying. Thankfully, he did end up running into Finn and Fern by coincidence, and they were able to calm him down a little. The three boys decided to spend the night camping together so Sweet Pea can have some more brute force protection. When that same night, the Lich Hand finds out where they are and tries to manipulate Sweet Pea more by whispering dark thoughts into his ear while he sleeps. And for a little bit, it seems to work because a possessed-looking Sweet Pea grabs Finn from behind, allowing the Lich Hand to run wild some more. Finn chases the Lich Hand into the same layer the original Lich used for his Well of Power. Finn reaches the area where the Well of Power lies, but the Lich Hand sneaks up on him and tries pushing him into the pit. Luckily, his quick reflexes were enough to get him to latch onto the ledge of the pit. The Lich Hand taunts Finn some more until Sweet Pea shows up. At first, it seems like Sweet Pea was actually going to join the Lich, but he turned on him, overpowering him with enough force to slay him with Finn's sword. And considering Sweet Pea grew up to be a giant in the Come Along With Me finale, it looks like he was able to keep the Lich at bay for, you know, hundreds of years, and that's very impressive. 
impressive. The Lich's final appearance in the Finn-focused Adventure Time was in the Distant Land special Together Again, where another Jake Lich hybrid hand takes control of New Death, ruling as the King of the Dead Worlds for a bit. However, it's not totally clear if this was the same Lich or a different one of the gazillion hands sent across the multiverse, but I think it's just easier to assume it's the original one because it's located in the Dead Worlds, so it makes sense after Sweet Pea slayed him, he'd just show up here. The Lich Hand begins using his influence to make New Death destroy pre-existing Dead Worlds, preventing souls from reincarnating into other living creatures in the living world. It wasn't until a dead Mr. Fox used the Kiss of Life object to strike New Death down and stop the Lich. Even then, the Lich still doesn't give up, attempting to manipulate Mr. Fox now since he'd become Death. But before he makes any progress, the Lich is quickly stopped by Jake and thrown into the darkness of the Underworld. It was so poetic seeing Finn and Jake take the Lich down one last time before they were reincarnated as new beings. For a while, it looked like that was going to be the last time we truly saw the Lich. That is, until the Adventure Time spinoff series, Fiona and Cake came out. During their journey across the multiverse, Fiona, Cake, and Simon Petrikov eventually landed in a universe where the Lich succeeded in killing all life. Considering this Lich is in Billy's body just like the original was at one point, it makes me wonder if this Lich was the same one that succeeded in making his wish come true, but Prismo zapped him into another some kind of alternate timeline slash universe where it was possible. Or it could be a different version of the Lich altogether. As of right now, I don't think there's been, you know, a flat-out confirmation if it's the same one or not. Though despite succeeding in his lifelong goal, he didn't feel the satisfaction he thought he would, essentially losing his purpose to go on and sinking into a bit of a depression, not even having the drive to kill Fiona, Cake, and Simon when they reach his chambers. After realizing the Lich poses no threat right now, Simon decides to use his body as a battery to power the spell to get Fiona and Cake back inside his mind. Although the two girls get back to their world, Simon, the Lich, and by chance the Scarab end up getting teleported to Golb's dimension. Once there, the Lich tries speaking directly with Golb about his struggles with what to do with this feeling of unsatisfaction, not understanding what more he could have done and looking for answers on what to do now. Presumably not pleased with his tone, Golb slash Golbetty turns the Lich into one of the T-shaped blocks that surround the Chaos God's head. And that was the last time we've seen the Lich. Potentially forever, but I sure hope not. I feel like the Adventure Time IP still has chances to tell more stories, even through Fiona and Cake still, by chance. Especially because of how the show's soundtrack is advertised as the Season 1 soundtrack. With that being the case, I'm still holding out hope another version of the Lich can appear in Adventure Time once more. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have a favorite moment of the Lich or if there's any other character suggestions you'd like to see for these types of videos in the future. I'd love to know your thoughts. And don't be a stranger to hitting that like button below if you enjoyed the video too. But for now, I will see you guys next time. Peace out, take care, bye-bye.